explain uh, uh, what I'm really thinking about uh, why, why I give this talk, uh, course. It about um, origins of this bridge and stability and all stuff. Uh, this story is the following. We have many triangulated categories. We have some algebraic geometry. Gives uh, many triangulated categories. And particularly if we have algebraic variety, x over k, let's say smooth proper variety, this is a, um, a category bounded complexes of coherent shifts. And it has some nice intrinsic categorical property. And uh, to the great surp surprise, uh, these things can have strange symmetries. They can have kind of non geometric symmetries. Uh, I'll just give you two examples. Uh, first, the, the, the first example is by Mukai, very long time ago. He discovered Fourier Mukai transform. What is about? If x, suppose x is a billion variety of any dimension. And you have dual abelian variety, which is a uh, um, variety of line bundles of degree 0 on A. Uh, if it's Jacobian of curve, it's the same, but in general, it's different variety. And uh, then uh, Mukai discovered what's called Fourier Mukai equivalence. That if you get category of complex of shifts on one variety, it's the same as on a dual variety. And uh, it's given by a uh, um, kernel, uh, namely, um, uh, what, is this, uh, what is the functor which gives this equivalence? We have A cross H check. It projects to A to a check. And also on a cross a check, you get universal bundle because these things crystallize line bundles. So you get universal bundle, one carrier bundle. Denote by P. And the functor is E goes to uh, uh, direct image on the second projection. What's the following things? You take pullback, multiply by this line bundle P and project using high images. And it turns out to be equivalence. OK. But it's, uh, in particular, suppose uh, if A is self-dual, like Jacobian of a curve, then I get equivalence of things with itself. But uh, one can take, for example, A is elliptic curve to raised to some power n. And of course, it's self-dual, and variety is also self-dual. And then we have plenty of functors you can uh, map by GL and Z, permuting, uh, acting on, um, using additional law. Then you can multiply by line bundles. Then we get Fourier Mukai transform, shifts, because it's a great category can shift. And, and, the, uh, and then what you see at the end of the day, that uh, uh, some cover of group S sp2 and z acts on, on the direct category. Mm. What does this mean, this cover? If you consider group sp2 and r, it has universal cover. And we can see the pre of matrices with integer coefficients. 
Okay, so we get action of nice group by symmetry of a category, which is not action on variety at all, itself at all. Yeah, so it's some it's analog of um, very representation in algebraic geometry. Yeah, that's one example, and the second example, I think it's actually me, a long, very long time ago, around 1994, something like this. Uh, you have start with a quintic threefold in uh, P4. It depends on many parameters. And what I can do with uh, coherent shifts, you, you can like multiply by line bundle, you have uh, multiplication by line uh, kind of degree one bundle, and also there is something called a reflection functor. Here, associated with structure trivial bundle O. And what does it mean? It's given by a kernel on x cross x. It's very simple. In degree zero put O of diagonal, which gives you identity functor, and you modify it by adding, adding for x cross x, and obvious restriction map as a differential. Okay, this complex of shifts, and it turns out to be invertible. One can make little calculations. Okay, so there are two functors, and they act on complex of shifts, they act on chain classes. This two functor act on chain classes, and chain classes belong to H zero of your variety plus H two plus H four plus H six. It's three-dimensional variety. Uh, this are uh, just Q to consider cohomology with rational coefficients. It's Q to power four, and mm, Tensoring by O1 gives the following matrix in uh, obvious basis. You just multiply by exponent chain, uh, uh, chain character, plus classes character, of length bundle, you get one, 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 one half, one half, one six. It's kind of beginning of series for exponent. It's for chain character, you get this this matrix, and then you get, for, this, for the second functor, that's called matrix T0, and for reflection of O, you get matrix T1, which is like this. It, it, is, it is this guy. And what is this number? 25, 26. It's actually one can calculate it using Kriman Roch, but I can give you easy derivation. If you consider a uh, uh, line bundle of degree m, where n is greater than 1, and consider sections like uh, polynomials of degree m, which vanish, vanish on this quintic threefold. And if you calculate dimension, you get uh, dimension of all polynomials minus dimension of polynomials which are divisible by the equation of the quintic, which will be here m minus 1 over 4, polynomial coefficients, and then I calculate it, so you get 25 over 6 m cubed plus 5 m m cubed over 3 factorial, also 6. So these numbers uh, appear here. Okay, so you get these two matrices and Then take product raised to fifth power, and what you get? You get identity matrix. Yeah, so I didn't make calculation by hand. I have to admit it using Paris. Yeah, so, but yeah, yeah. So that uh, that was at the time was a great surprise. And what you see? This uh, three matrices generate monodromy 
of some fourth order differential equation over P1 minus three points, CP1 minus three points. And the equation is uh, well known to its mirror symmetry. Kind of the one of solution is this hypergeometric series and its branches. Now, so you get exactly this monodromy. Yeah, so that's uh, mm, something remarkable goes on. Uh, so, some f uh, this this is p one minus three point is moduli space of mirror dual uh, Calabi of threefold, which are pretty complicated here, but to have just one parameter and its fundamental group. We see adds acts on uh, uh, middle cohomology. It will be exactly that how the symmetry acts on the functor on categories. Yeah, so that's the story, and uh, it was kind of way to introduce you what is mirror symmetry. There are many ways, many approaches, but one can see that it's something which produces tons of examples like this. You get uh, P1 of moduli space of Calabiao varieties, these trivial elements, acts by automorphisms of derived category of any Calabi Yao variety from your, from your family. Uh, uh, and, and in fact, it's something very, very, very striking. If you consider Modular space over complex numbers and consider a uh, fundamental group, which is a discrete group. Uh, usually, in algebraic geometry, um, when people look uh, 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 Saren, Grotendieck, they use fundamental groups only to make profinite completion. Uh, the six uh, as an abstract group have no uh, meaning in algebraic geometry. But now these groups have some meaning. And here's a collaborative variety from family, but could be defined of some finite field. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's you get com uh, kind of strange interaction of complex numbers and arbitrary fields mm. in, uh, in this story. Mm. I said Calabiao. Uh, so Calabiao means that canonical class is trivial, so they have holomorphic volume element. Just one can ask why Calabiao? So it means canonical class is trivial. Uh, in kind of first, it's the same as first chain class of a cotangent bundle. So it's same as element of Picard group. Uh, uh, the reason is that uh, a theorem by Bondal and Kapranov in late 80s, if X smooth projective, but not Calabi Yao. Uh, so there are kind of two basic cases. The canonical class is positive, so it's a variety of general type. So it means that number of equations is bigger than number of uh, variables in, uh, like, or it's negative, it's called Fano. And I'll drag in differential geometry to correspond to get uh, Ricci. Uh, metric with rich curve which is equal minus one or plus one and Calabi out rich curve which is zero. But if it's uh, not uh, not Calabi out, then uh, this category knows about variety itself and more and automorphism of this category is equal exactly shifts automorphism of variety itself and tensoring by line bundles. So, it, so it's everything is geometric. And for, for Calabi, you get, you get a huge amount of extra symmetries. Okay. 
Ja, so sieht's. Ja. So the picture that outmorphism its group is much bigger than one can see naively. Mm. And I want to say that it's it's definitely much bigger usually than the things which kind of proposed by mirror symmetry, this fundamental group, this uh, automorphism group of Calabial category. Uh, Calabial category, it, it's just property which formalizes that this variety is Calabial, which of maybe n Calabial category, n is dimension, uh, that for any object in F, if consider home from f to e and take dual, it's the same as home from e to f shifted by n. Yeah, and if we get functorial isomorphisms, it's called Calabio. Yeah, and orthomorphism group Calabio, it's uh, usually very big, uh, much bigger than this fundamental group, uh, and uh, this. One way to see it is the following. Suppose you have object in this category, which you don't by C. Suppose it's spherical object. And spherical, uh, I, yeah, it looks like uh, why it's related to geometry, we'll see it later. Uh, but spherical uh, means, by definition, that if consider a uh, uh, dimension of X group of object to itself is equal to 1 in degree 0 and n. By duality, it's the same in degree i and n minus i, so it should have identity map, subsequent degree 0, and it should have also subsequent degree n. It's kind of minimal possible thing, and 0 otherwise. And you see it's the same as dimension of cohomology of sphere. Yeah, so that's why it's people call it spherical. And then we can make a reflection functor. Uh, uh, namely, R for any spherical object, Rf will be the following. Object E goes to cone of the following guy. You have uh, F times our home F E. It's a finite dimensional complex. You multiply, you get universal map, and take cone. And uh, uh, the theorem is that it's invertible. Exactly for Calabi-Yau category spherical object. So you get plenty of invertible functions for spherical objects. And spherical objects are, uh, at least if dimension is 3, Mm. There should be plenty of them, kind of typical object, if you take like a vector bundle on Calabio 3 fold, uh, should, should be rigid and should have only, uh, should, have, should be spherical object, should have only x0 and x3 and no x1, x2. Kind of like typical bundle. Or one can make a curve sitting in Calabio 3 fold and such that at normal bundle, is it's something vector bundle of degree minus 2, and it's, again, typically should be O minus 1 plus O minus 1, and then it's again spherical object. And we know from Grom of Witten events there are really zillions of rational curves on Calabi L3 fold, and we get a lot of commuting functors, so we get huge, huge group. Mm. So how stability enters in the game? I just want to say this kind of highly hypothetical picture. Uh, I have this huge group, automorphism group of n Calabio category C, some, which could be equivalent to one of this DB Koch or something like this. And then this guy acts on some abstract uh, stuff, space of stability conditions. V 
which is, uh, by, as I explained, by Bridgen's theorem, it's complex manifold, but of uh, locally isomorphic to cone in some uh, finite dimensional space. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of uh, complex manifold, but very stupid structure, uh, very close to model space of quadratic differentials. But um, and have many common properties like action of gel to R and so on. Yeah, so I get the space of stability. It's man manifold, but nobody says that this guy is connected. And what is expected is that by one of uh, model space of mirror space of mirror Calabi-Yaus should be equal to stabilizer of a connected component under the section. And that's a rough picture. So this, uh, so the space of connected components should be something like quotient of this huge group by smaller, this fundamental group. Mm. Yeah, so that's actually my goal, kind of introduced to a framework to understand why fundamental group acts on, on a category and acts on category and uh, mm. one can uh, look on concrete examples and see that it goes on in, uh, in example by example but what is general reasons at the moment I have mathematical explanation only for categories defined over non-Archimedean fields and kind of close to very degenerate. Ah, so you see that it, uh, by this picture it should act by symmetries of uh, Categories for the whole family. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I says it's even over of Q and so on. And family is even consider complex points as some kind of variety with cusps. And what we kind of control only in neighborhood of, on the cusp. We can see that for, for categories with parameters belonging to the uh, this formal neighborhoods, you, you, you get the section. In why it extends everywhere, it's complete mystery. Yeah, so there's really no. Uh, explanation, uh, but there are physical reasons uh, namely what's called two dimensional n equal to two, two super conformal field theory gives kind of uh, some reason why should uh, the thing should act by the whole family not on the near the cusps. Now, that was actually um, um, proposed by Mike, Mike Douglas. Uh, uh, actually, the story it was uh, pretty convoluted uh, about uh, when they propose homological mirror symmetry, so the categories and uh, and uh, Mike Douglas started to think why why we should have and this should be something called D brains and why it's a category. Uh, so there was some he thought about this and then in this turn uh, category gets Z grading on uh, on the homes and it turns out to be pretty pretty tricky story when he analyzes Z grading. And then st st analyze the, uh, what happens with D brains uh, with when you change parameters, when they kind of became unstable and so on. And then uh, uh, Tom Bridgeland formalized uh, rules which Douglas uh, invented to, make, to uh, observe to get this definition of abstract stability. Yeah, so, so the origin of the story is really strong string theory. And what is rough picture? 
my belt. I need this disc. Yeah, so this is thus such, such beasts. They have some mathematical definition, uh, what people believe, what it's impossible to work with. So it's, we leave it to physicists. One can give definition, but you cannot prove any theorem with this definition. One can maybe check on computer, but nothing can, can, can be proved. Yeah, so the, so the model is space of this n equal to two, blah, 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 whatever it is, it's kind of kind of countable disjoint union of some connected components. And connected components uh, uh, typically should be complex manifolds of the form which are product of two uh, smaller complex manifolds, algebraic varieties. Um, uh, a posteriori, it's, it's not does follow from physics. From physics, you say have only complex geometry. A posteriori, both things are algebraic varieties defined over integers. Well, maybe sometimes roots of one, but it doesn't follow from definition. And uh, these two guys, each of them is a modular space of uh, some Calabio varieties. And so of given dimension n. And n is related to central charge of this conformal field theory. Okay, so you get the things, uh, pro you get product space and over this thing, you get two families of triangulated categories. Then we call it CA and CB, depending on point on space, and out with uh, bridgeless stability condition. Also, depending on a point on a model space, uh, yeah, as I said, that this bridge stability condition was translation to mathematics of this physical language of D brains. So the stable objects, something called D brains, which can again can have mathematical definition which, with which you cannot work at all. It's uh, one can give you some Hilbert spaces, operator product expansion, but it's n n cannot really proof anything here. Uh, and what, what goes on? Uh, so you have, like, if you have point x, y in this product space, then the category C A uh, depends on x, say, holomorphically. But on Y, it's locally constant. So, uh, so this category locally doesn't change if it changes Y. The central charge, which maps from this category to complex numbers, is uh, Conversely, it's kind of locally constant in X and holomorphic in Y. So it depends kind of a of second parameter. And similar story for uh, if you replace A, B, you change the role of the whole story. So you get two family of, of categories.
BPSD prints. BPSD prints, yeah. Actually, not BPS states in string theory. It's, it's there are something called BPS states, and yeah. no, I think it's just D brains. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, extension of conform field theory to the boundary. Yeah, it's not BPS states. Yeah, uh, or supersymmetric brains. Whatever. Now, so you get two family of categories, and you can see the fundamental group. Of this product space, it's product of two groups. It's sex by automorphisms of uh, something like periodic cyclic homology or topological case theory of uh, one category or another category. And the story is it's, it's the same action. Comology will be identified. Categories are completely different. And uh, what's going on, for example, consider this A category go in parameter Y, go around, you got automorphism of categories. That means that fundamental group in Y direction of MB acts by automorphisms of category in uh, depending upon your text. It could be and X you can fix. So it's for all of them you get action simultaneously. Yeah, so that's Abstract stories, there's no actually uh, Calabio varieties in this game, it just it's some categories. And mm, that's a, a picture which is very far from being understood mathematically. Uh, again, typically, these modular spaces are not compact. Uh, they have cusps at infinity. And so we can, I don't know, we can write like product of MA multiplied by MB. And here are infinity of MA. You approach these things, or here approach infinity of MB. You can, uh, so you can fix one parameter and another parameter go to the, uh, to the cusp. And if you go, uh, in, in either way, go to the cups, uh, cusp, Go to cusp in one direction, in one factor. Show them. Then the claim, then in this limit, you uh, a manifold will arise uh, from nothing from conform field theory because in conform field theory you get some space of fields, some operator product expansion, and then if go to limits uh, to the limit you will see that algebra of fields became close to commutative and. And the separate product expansion gives a structure of complex remaining ma uh, manifold with some Keller metric. So you get kind of target space description. So you get certain uh, Calabio manifold with uh, Ricci flat metric. It will be two types of manifolds depending on which point. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, no. The mirror symmetry. I will not talk uh, about the mirror symmetry. If you go simultaneously to both limits, then you'll see some mirror symmetry stretch. But I, I, I'm not talking about mirror symmetry. Yeah. So you get. Uh, so you see some kind of geometry. You can write Lagrangian for your story. In, inside, there's no kind of Lagrangian. Uh, you see some geometry and. Mm, uh, if you go to s s whatever in, in some limit, then CB will be uh, equal to, like, let's go to horizontal limit, so a fixed point in B modular space. And then this category B will be a derived category of coherent shifts on this manifold. So it depends on the complex parameters. Mm. And CA will be Fukai category of a real symplectic manifold, uh, like, like just infinity manifold. Forget about complex structure, X, and you put Keller form. 
And strictly speaking, you, uh, there is something called B field, which is um, kind of uh, imaginary companion of a uh, symplectic form. Uh, B field is a homology class of X with coefficients in U1. And form O1 is H2 of X in R. And if you add of them, you identify this homology H2 of X with coefficient C star. So it gets some complex structure in parameter space. And both categories have some stabilities, but the story here is that stability is kind of geometrically visible. And there's limit only for Fukai category. Yeah, so uh, things which are very geometry uh, love to uh, this coherent shifts. But that will be very complicated and hard to construct things. There's no obvious differential equations here. And here will be some actual differential geometry. Yeah, so uh, so this is story about Foucault categories, which think are sort of symplectic manifold. And uh, a posterior it seems to be the best way to think about triangular categories. What people used to think, it's uh, complex of shifts, it's not kind of the right uh, th think from non commutative viewpoint. Here you can see all structure very literally in this thing. And Foucault category is defined when I approach closer and closer, and so it will be kind of like series in small parameter. And formally, at the moment, it's category over some non Archimedean field, which is called Novikov field, which is uh, like Laurent series with complex coefficient, but with real exponents. So you just consider set of all possible infinite sums, t is variable, I see i complex numbers, e i are real numbers, and if they are infinitely many, they go to plus infinity. Yeah, in principle, series should, should converge, but uh, it, it's not proven at all, and people uh, work with this form of power series. Uh, and I will now speak about definition of Fouquet category. Uh, which is uh, the story that it's really disastrous situation. This it's a disaster, I have to say. So this uh, for many many years. Uh, we are still not able to give really satisfactory good definition. And so it's, uh, people work in Foucault category form kind of like sect, so they can talk to each other, but it's really hard to make it uh, uh, really commonly accepted. I think people are used to, but uh, if, if you are not in the subject, it's impossible to work technically in this. Yeah, so it's, yeah, so there's no, SGI yet. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's, mm, mm, yeah, so Kenji Fukai, I think it's just because the story is genuinely more, more difficult than the Cetal homology. It's next level of complexity, but I, I'm not, I, I don't agree. I think it's maybe just not enough. There's no Grotendieck in this subject, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so the Foucault category, almost all approaches, it, you should make some choices. 
and choices form some contractible set. And result is independent on choices. Mm. Now, so uh, first, uh, to start with, you need uh, to have some symplectic manifold. And at the moment, I assume that it's compact. It's infinity symplectic manifold. And, and also, I assume that first chain class of tangent bundle is trivial Now I'm doing smooth topology. It's class on second homology with integer coefficients, and mm. strictly speaking, it's not a condition. It's a, a certain choice here. It's a, it's a certain kind of datum here, namely you use whatever some cell decomposition and write some two cochain, and you use one cochain whose boundary is equal to this two cochain. You should prove that it's a zero on the level of cochain. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, this variety of dimension to n. And also you can fix, but it's really minor point, uh, B field, which we again look on cochain level, not just cohomology class. But uh, some two cochain uh, in this coefficients in this shift. Yeah. And uh, now, what are choices which uh, uh, one should make? First, one should choose an almost complex structure. Uh, so that it's pointwise g in omega, it will be pointwise scalar. But the main thing is g is not integrable. And uh, a pointwise space of choices is some quotient of SP modular unitary uh, group, which is contractible space. So that's why you can do it without any obstructions. And second choice comes from the fact that first chain class is zero. You choose omega, which will be n zero form respect to this complex structure, uh, not vanishing everywhere, but not closed. This exactly comes from this first chain class equal to zero, the ex existence of such form. Okay. And now uh, I'll uh, just uh, Recall if you know, but if you don't know, just to f try to frighten you, what are kind of some objects of Foucault category. Maybe B. Uh, it was a original definition by Kenji Foucault. Uh, you take L in X, it shall be compact. Uh, Lagrangian submanifold. Then it should be oriented and have spin structure. And and then one making another choice which could respond to some kind of grading choice. Uh, namely Uh, from uh, this because it's oriented and you restrict this form on this guy, it will be non vanishing everywhere and I take kind of argument. R mod 2 pi z. And then you choose a lift to real numbers. It's not, doesn't, uh, doesn't exist always. Uh, there's some abstraction to existence. It's called Maslow class. 
this kind of rotation, uh, homology class of this map belongs to H1 of L to Z. It should vanish, Maslow class should vanish, and then you can lift it. Okay. And then I make thing which is not realistic, but still. Uh, I assume that there is no G holomorphic disk mm. in X whose boundary is an L. It is not a point. Maybe I skip story about B field for simplicity. Okay. Uh, so the role of this it will clear in, in a few minutes. I think I can remove this physical picture at all. Okay. Now, suppose we have get two such Lagrangian submanifolds, and assume that intersection is transversal. Uh, so you don't cannot take tw twice the same space. Uh, then we can make define something called floor complex. Uh, it will be the Snovikov field uh, raised to a set of intersection points, which is finite set. It will be vector space on the field with the basis. And you use you introduce certain Z grading. Uh, so for, for this set labeling base, you should search some integer number. And what goes on, you get two or Lagrange manifolds, you kind of rotate in the shortest way tangent space of L1 to L2, make an LT continuation of argument and see how the lift to argument it changes one way to another. Yeah, so I guess this Z grading, and now introduce differential. Uh, namely, DP1 will be some P1, P2, P2. And you take a so great differential in the base with certain coefficients. And things are degree one and CP1, P2, it's some huge infinite sum, namely we have to Lagrangian get to intersection points and consider all possible holomorphic disks with boundary here and here. And again, if everything is generic situations, they'll be isolated. It follows from Calabio conditions and this degree reasons kind of isolated disks. And you take T to power minus integral of omega of the disk, of plus, sorry, of the disk. This will be some positive number. Mm. Yeah, in principle, one can add, if it has a B field, you pair B field with a disk, roughly. You get element in U1, which is sits in, 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 in C. You can multiply also by complex numbers, absolute value one. And also you put some plus minus here. Uh, because it's uh, the things are isolated, it's coming from some Fred volume operators and some kind of index theory. 
and almost couple of complex structures, and we get this formula and it's kind of this argument that d square equal to zero, uh, how it's, it's proven. Uh, and is this subject are pictorial proofs and technical proofs nobody reads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, the pictorial proofs is the following. You, uh, now consider uh, matrix coefficients of d square, so consider uh, maybe kind of P3. Degree raised by two, and you consider uh, matrix coefficients, and uh, then these disks form one parameter families, and then you can see the boundaries of these families. So the uh, sum of boundary points we sign should be equal to zero, and boundary points. In principle, uh, uh, are of two t three types. This just degenerate to the things, which which is formula for d square. But then you get two other types a priori. You can uh, have such picture. Uh, so this bubble appears from one side or from another side. And this is exactly what is forbidden by this assumption, which is, which is pretty formal. It does clear where, where this nature come from natural geometric situation. And then you can count uh, polygons. Isolated polygons, and that's uh, mm, remarkably gives uh, uh, something called cyclic infinity structure. Yeah, so uh, it's not clear who, who, what is who was the first chicken or egg here. People kind of make algebraic definition uh, to, to to make this geometry work, and it's uh, yeah. So this whole thing's developed simultaneously, and geometry and algebraic formalism. Infinity structure. So we make definitions to make this things will be literally without any trouble. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. Here this is kind of pretty unpleasant uh, condition, uh, which is uh, uh, not terribly natural. And there are some improvements. Yeah. Mm. yeah, first there was kind of thousand page manuscript by Fukaya, Okta, Ona, E. O., which took many, many years and a lot of controversies and so on. Uh, uh, but the main kind of uh, thing from this uh, manuscript, you, you drop the condition that there is no holomorphic disk. Sorry, there's no disk, no disks. So you allow all Lagrange manifold with natural story, but uh, there's a price to pay. You need make some other choices. Which uh, were not present before. Mm. First of all, this one thing which one can do, do from the very beginning, uh, one can uh, end up put on L uh, complex local system, finite dimensional representation of fundamental group or complex of such guys. It's a little um, modification, but the, uh, the most unpleasant thing is. You should choose something called boundary cut chain. Uh, which is uh, kind of hand, uh, you, uh, when you see such disks, you, uh, they form a boundary, for example, get some loops on, a, on an L, and you try to choose a chain on L whose boundary is things. You can try to correct it step by step. 
and I eventually it was some kind of solution of some Mauro Cartan equation and some to certain Lie algebra. And you get some series in positive powers of t, and uh, exponents will be exactly areas of the disk which appear in this thing. Yeah, so it's kind of pure algebraic gadget, kind of to cancel algebraically these disks. Mm. But what is advantage? of this thing, uh, one can move now Lagrangian manifolds. Before Lagrangian manifolds, you, you don't have any morphism to itself because intersection was not transversal. And uh, it will be get good to move Lagrangian manifolds and can move L by Hamiltonian isotopy. So in symplectic geometry, there is, uh, if you want to move La Lagrange manifold, um, there is some special class of movements uh, called Hamiltonian isotopies. It's, it's the following. If you imagine your manifold, you kind of move it. And then the speed is a section of conormal bundle, which is uh, uh, the, uh, the same as cotangent bundle with symplectic structure. And uh, so L dot is the one form on L, and if, if the movement preserves the properties, it's Lagrange, it means that it's closed one form. Yeah, so you, the speed of movements is given just by closed one forms. And one closed one forms, it's exact one forms. So you have uh, differential of C infinity of L, F goes to the F, or H goes to the H. And if you move by exact forms, it's called Hamiltonian isotopy, and this is something which um, uh, so, mm, so this procedure one can kind of can uh, mm, mm, for Hamiltonian isotopy can transform solution of at least for small time uh, of this bounding cut chain along Hamiltonian isotopy, and it will be kind of the same object. It will be isomorphic object. So we can choose kind of different models of the object uh, and achieve transversality. Yeah, and then, yeah, in fact, I was also behind this project secretly uh, a long time ago. But uh, but then, mm, 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 like Eventually, uh, 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 there was a different idea. It's kind of like a skeletal approach. Uh, and about uh, it's something which I proposed maybe 10 years ago, and then about a year ago, uh, with Jan Söbelman, we make kind of kind of breakthrough, but it's not uh, completely finished. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, uh, mm, different way to define Foucault categories. And on skeletal things, there are a lot of activity. Mm. So the, uh, the, uh, the idea is the following. We, uh, the main idea just we drop the conditions that Lagrangian manifolds are smooth at all. So we start with arbitrary kind of thick L will be arbitrarily maybe uh, closed single Lagrangian subset. Uh, yeah, one have to, I can't be too precise here because singularity should be of some kind of reasonable type, yeah, but uh, uh, at least uh, kind of analytic singularities should be okay. And with this uh, uh, singular subset, I'm proceeding in two steps. Uh, kind of step one, you construct a finite uh, Z graded 
we were let me on, on the subset and plus differential in pass algebra and it looks as it's all six will be defined over integers without kind of completely uh, um, Six can work in any characteristic and depends only on small neighborhood of L. And this thing is defined again up to derived Marit equivalence. So from representation theory, you should get the same story. Yeah, so it's not one object, but it depends on some choices which I give the equivalence. And uh, the choices, for example, will sell the composition of L. Sell the composition of L. If you choose sell the composition, then vertices of the quiver will be the set of top dimension and dimensional cells. Dim x is equal to n, dim l is equal to n. Yeah, so in principle, the story one can consider not Lagrangian subset, but something smaller. And the small part will contribute nothing if it or it's, it's, if it can be contracted to n minus one dimensional thing, then this whole thing will be nothing. Yeah, so it's only n dimensional cells will be vertices. And edges will be things coming when cells are attached to each other. S it's something related to uh, singularities of this uh, guy. Mm. Yeah, okay, so you get this things uh, with, um, which in principle one can calculate and uh, you'll see later examples. But then holomorphic disks in X whose boundary is in L should deform pass algebra of this quiver. Yes. Of pass algebra of this quiver. And deformation will be over ring of integers of the Noyko field and given by some higher order terms. So um, exactly T to power of uh, areas of these disks. Yeah, this was kind of a rough idea and uh, originally this um, technical difficulty is how you count what is the formula, what contribution of disk was kind of enormous and we found some kind of way to circumvent it, it uh, and to get some answer. Yeah. And We define FL, which can be sort as objects of Foucault category. With models, in a sense, like choice of special Lagrange manifolds, uh, supported in, in L. That's, that's a rough picture. And FL. Um, it will be to the category of ring of integers without uh, negative powers. It will be finite dimensional uh, DG uh, representations of the of the deformed uh, deformed pass algebra. Mm. Yeah, in, in concrete terms, uh, you, say, you say that it's, uh, it's very simple, uh, similar to what I explained in my first lecture about how one can treat generated categories. Uh, you get uh, finitely many arrows generating the square, uh, which are um, enumerated first, second, so on, and differential of each arrow is some expression in previous arrows. 
And now consider presentation. You, you have a question. Each error will go to some mm, finite dimensional matrix. And then you want to calculate, uh, solve st step by step finitely many equations and uh, these finitely many variables. Deformed, no, I, I told you that holomorphic disks deform my class algebra and consider implementation of deformed algebra. Uh, so you get these things in particular uh, because it's a representation Q in each vertex you get certain uh, multiplicity, some vector space or maybe finite dimensional complex of vector space. So you get some integer number associated to each vertex and then you get kind of earlier characteristic map from object of this category to uh, n chains of this uh, thing with, because for each n dimensional cell it gets a multiplicity. But in fact it will be closed m chain at the end of the day. And this is the same because it's top degree part is the same as uh, n's homology of L with Z. Because there's no n plus one chains to speak about and it's top degree homology. Yeah, so you get mapped to middle homology and which will be later play a role. And what is expected? It's like uh, interesting in shifts with support on some subsets, on a larger subsets, will be one will be full subcategory of another. If L1 is close is subset of another, uh, L2, then uh, FL1 will be full subcategory of FL2. So it means that you get the functors and on object for small category, homes here are the same as homes here. Yeah, so that's, so it's just add more and more object. And then mm, uh, you, def you consider limit of all possible uh, subsets, FL. It's a ring of integers and now you add inverse powers of t, get all things, and this will be definition of um, uh, of the Foucault category. And uh, maybe now I make a small break for five minutes. Yeah. One can make the following conjecture. Uh, suppose uh, my form omega, which is, was my n0 form, assume is form is closed. In fact, it will imply that com complex structure is integrable. So we get honest complex manifold. Uh, then, then for k category, uh, um, should have a canonical stability structure. Uh, I will write you uh, in, in a second what is central charge and stable object. And stability structure is uh, invariant under uh, continuous ch changes of omega preserving homology class. Con same con condition, whatever, yeah. Yeah, so uh, geometrically you have infinitely many parameters because you use, uh, uh, try to see what, how things interact, you choose some Keller metric on complex manifold and there are infinitely many parameters. But at the end of the day will be finitely many parameters because everything will depend on the, uh, on homology classes. Uh, but geometry of the story depends on actual choice of Keller metrics and complex structures and so on. So first of all, what is the central charge?
you just uh, look on this definition. Object of Foucault category has a representative, which is some single Lagrangian guy, which is E in f of L. And then it has earlier characteristic, also the earlier characteristic of E, which is belong to a uh, top degree homology group of L, which maps to homology of X. And then you integrate omega, you get complex numbers. So it will be a central charge. Mm. Mm. What will be stable objects? Or semi stable objects? Uh, they should have representative supported on some L. Those which have representatives in FL for certain L. And mm, the, the picture is the following L is special Lagrangian. Of course, it's a union of some small, some smooth pieces, like n cells. You can decompose the pieces. And for each cell, each L alpha should be oriented, say. Now it's oriented. And you choose the, ar in the argument of restriction of form omega restricted to L alpha is equal to theta, and you, which is constant. And moreover, uh, representation of quiver, which you said, which you deform, should be concentrated in degree zero. In particular, Eric risk will be kind of positive on a negative dimension of some vector space. Ah, so these things are called special Lagrangian subsets. Mm. And here we see calibrated geometry. Uh, these are really like so bubbles which minimize the area in given homology class. Uh, for, such, uh, for such objects, uh, if you consider uh, absolute value of the central charge, it will be the same as re uh, usual area uh, uh, mm, mm, counted with multiplicities. And in fact, it's uh, less than equal than Riemannian volume uh, for any integer chain in class uh, uh, kind of image of which is kind of image of E in uh, middle homology of, the, of X. Uh, it's called BPS inequality because this six will be equal to integral over this uh, class of real part of exponent minus E theta omega, some real value 10 form. And this real value 10 form is bounded below by remaining one on each Lagrangian uh, uh, subset, and this equality appears only if you get kind of right direction. Mm. Now it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of the main tool to in, in differential geometry to prove that the variety is some minimal. You you write some found some diff closed differential form, and with pointwise inequality respect to remaining metric, and remaining metric it's actually which is remaining metric. It's not scalar metric. It's scalar metric multiplied by some function. Metric for, for omega and j. So it's multiplied by some kind of function bigger than zero. And functions chosen in the way that the volume form, remaining volume should be equal to omega, omega bar. Because there no, will be no relation between omega and omega bar. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that. Uh, um, yeah, it's not what physicists uh, 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 say. Physicists in physics, uh, you consider solution of uh, 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 mont uh, mont equation, kind of rich flat things when this remaining world e e really equal to the things. It's very complicated equation you have to first to solve, and then uh, mm. uh, uh, that string theory, uh, uh, kind of what Mike Douglas wrote, it's applicable only for uh, Keller Einstein manifold. And my conjecture is much softer. It says that any Keller metric will work. Holomorphic Keller form shouldn't in interact in any way with um, uh, um, volume element. So 2 of this omega capital omega is closed. It's closed, yeah. yeah it's closed form here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, uh, in the next and last lecture, I'll explain even more general things, even there's even no complex structure, the whole thing still should work. It, it's very, very soft. And, um, but uh, let's stay in this generality. So this question is why bridge axiomatics Yeah, there are several, uh, we have this mm, description of what are semi-stable objects. Then one can check the vanishing of X, uh, it's very easy to prove, but the main thing, why hardware assumed filtration exists on an object? And like for queers, I said that uh, you have some flaw. Here I can imagine some flaw, uh, which is the following. It's defined only on outside of singular part. Uh, so you get maybe single guy and you start to move it. And L dot should be closed one form. I said should be uh, uh, Hamiltonian isotopy should be gradient of some function minus differential of a function. And function is one can uh, the best choice is argument of restriction of omega to L. Which is was this was a choice of real valued function, so you get Hamiltonian isotopy, and one can show, and, uh, one can do it in much larger generality, that the area which defined is integral of kind of real volume form, which is kind of bound below, upper bound uh, of the central charge. This area decreases by this flow. Yeah, so the things cannot go wild. So and it should kind of stabilize. But when it stabilizes, it means the differential function is zero. So you get uh, a special Lagrangian. And um, then uh, the hope is to prove that everything is okay. You get a really hard on filtration things order to think it's yeah, that's a, a big project for many years. It's not uh, very far from in achievement, and um, this uh, one of major difficulties: what to do at singular points. No. Uh, and um, uh, again, in the next lecture, I'll explain um, approach to this major difficulties. There is a phone. It's even on a plane. You can have some graph, and you start deform that the whole thing should uh, replaced by some kind of complicated saw bubble inside. Uh, and uh, how to invent a saw bubble? It's it's a completely non-trivial um, issue. So next time I formulate some very general conjecture, even in dimension two, how such things appear, uh, and it's related to honeycomb diagrams. Yeah. yeah, the whole story actually uh, for Foucault category can be defined for non-compact varieties. It was also some major development. Uh, and in the non-compact case, uh, uh, what you need roughly the following. Uh, you try to compactify your manifold by some boundary, and in boundary choose open part. 
And moreover, this open part should be of some special uh, class called stops, but uh, one should have a Hamiltonian vector field, which is uh, defined uh, non-trivial only in the neighborhood of this part. And maybe I can draw the picture. So I get this U, I get other part of the boundary. Then I get vector field, which is very, very small, near the, uh, starts very, very slowly and goes uh, and very slowly ends. So it goes infinite time from left to the right. And the whole thing is kind of here as well. But the whole thing is kind of completely zero, completely frozen outside of small neighborhood. Yeah, the whole thing is uh, could be defined in very, very tiny neighborhood of this U. Um, and then you allow Lagrangian manifold, or maybe let's speak about smooth Lagrangian manifold, which are closed in X, but not compact. And the property is that the, this boundary to infinity of this guy belongs to this U. Yeah, so allow thing going to this U. And when you can see the Holmes on partially wrapped Foucault, between L1 and L2, uh, you consider the following thing. You take, uh, how to say, you have two guys, and maybe other color. And th then start to move one of them according to the flow. And then the intersection points will be kind of stabilized, will be certain mm, yeah. mm. finite number of intersection points. So, so you define uh, home of one as limit, which is which kind of stabilizes at some finite moment of t goes to infinity of the Snovica field. And you start to intersect an mm, exponent of this field, whatever psi t of L1 intersect with L2. And eventually it will, it will stay the same and get uh, some number. So, yeah, so it's, uh, the main story is that it's, it's no longer Calabria categories, because if you start to move another guy, the intersection, number of intersection point will be different. Yeah, so you get... Uh, mm. In some sense, beyond Calabio categories. Mm. And this is a kind of main, main example of such uh, uh, partial R Foucault category when X is R2 and burn infinity will be S1, and you choose n plus 1 interval, union of n plus 1 open intervals. Get, get things like this. Uh, here one can make a skeleton. Which will be, uh, skeleton will be this union of rays. This will be non-compact. Mm. And, mm. and corresponding uh, quiver is derived equivalent to quiver a n. Quiver a n has n vertices, this guy has n plus 1 vertices, but you, but when you can derive the equivalence, you can change number of vertices for quiver. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, basic example. For example, when n is equal to 2, here you get just error of one point to another, but it's the same as exact triangles. And exact triangles are, will be the three spikes of this picture. Mm. And here it's a very nice example. All this prediction with stability and holomorphic quantum forms work perfectly, although it's, uh, it goes a little bit beyond algebraic geometry. One can prove the stability category of this uh, thing. Uh, for this Foucault category in this example, is equal to space of holomorphic forms. 
about Keller class, you don't have to worry. It have infinite area. So it will be holomorphic one forms on C of the form exponent uh, whatever P n plus one W Z maybe W D W. You consider this one forms. Maybe P n plus one is polynomial of degree n plus one. Uh, so you get uh, this holomorphic form, and mm, uh, the claim is each holomorphic uh, form gives you stability structure on, uh, on this category of queer an. And uh, the construction is the following: if you have this holomorphic one form, then omega is one form non-vanishing on C, and it, and consider omega cross omega bar get flat metric. You get flat metric on C, but it's strange flat metric. It's not usual uh, R2. And for example, if even if plane of degree 2, how it looks like, I can consider kind of draw you part of this of this manifold with flat metric. Yeah, you can glue from two pieces of paper such thing which is flat, but it's not compact. But now you kind of start to extend here and start to rotate these things infinitely many ways, and this ray also infinitely many ways, and the same at this point. Yeah, so you get very hard to imagine flat metric on R2. Um, and these points are do not, these singular points are not parts of R2. You remove them. They're like in, in uh, uh, the not parts of R2, so this metric will be not complete. And if you want to complete this metric, you get n plus 1 points I, I, at infinity. Here it will be 2 points, n plus 1 points. And stable objects will be geodesics connecting these points. Uh, connected these singular points. Yeah, so it's a very uh, clean, nice one-dimensional example. Mm. The miraculously, space of stability uh, conditions coincides with the space of holomorphic forms. In principle, we it can be so optimistic in high dimensions. Yeah, so uh, I'll briefly go to some further development. Uh, uh, so this, uh, the story for high categories, it's always changing. There are some more and more ideas. And uh, it was uh, uh, so the like idea that you can define for high categories with coefficients. Like here you get integer homology, but maybe you can have homology with some other coefficients. Uh, and what is geometric origin? Geometric origin is the following. Suppose you get one Keller manifold maps to another Keller manifold, and the, the top guy is. Kalabiyao, uh, but not Ricci flat metric. I don't use Ricci flat metric, just some Keller metric and volume element. So you get omega. And suppose, uh, like complex dimension of y is n plus m, and complex dimension of x is equal to n, and omega is belongs to, it will be n plus m zero form. The top case. Um, we have a map is not uh, compatible with scalar metric at all. There are arbitrary scalar metrics. Then, uh, first of all, uh, consider generic fiber. It's again Calabio variety of dimension m. You divide volume element on the total space by volume element on the base. 
and uh, and also is m-dimensional Calabillo. The base is not Calabillo at all. It could be projective line or whatever, or non-compact. Mm. Then we do the following. We consider omega x, omega y, plus epsilon inverse pullback of omega y, omega x. It's again Keller form because it's strictly positive. It's non-negative, so it will be strictly positive. It's again Keller metric on y. And um, if you rescaled by epsilon, you see that the fibers became very, very short. It's it will collapse to the base. Keller collapse. Mm. And then one can try to look at the question, what are special Lagrangian submanifolds in this sig uh, where epsilon is very small? And uh, one can argue that uh, special Lagrangian in y, when epsilon is much small, will look uh, roughly as It will be special Lagrangian on the fiber and kind of special Lagrangian on, will be product, will be product uh, special Lagrangian in fiber and parameterized by some kind of maybe L in x, which will be kind of special Lagrangian. And um, uh, what really goes on? Uh, suppose the argument is some angle theta. So get this uh, solve this differential equation, argument is theta. Um, then uh, on fiber, it's Calabello, but volume element, it's not really defined. You get map from, uh, uh, if you get uh, uh, x sitting in yx, and you, if you integrate omega over Lx, you get not a number because it's n plus m form. You, uh, and you get element in which n cotangent phase to x at point x. Yeah, so it means, uh, it means the following. If you fix homology class in the fiber, then on the base you get n form. And then the things on the base should be special Lagrangian with slope theta with respect to this n form. Let's see my special Lagrangian. Back to this n zero form. Yeah, so then, so form on the base depends on the choice of homology class in the fiber. It's not a unique one. And uh, then uh, the idea was the following. Here we have kind of description when we kind of special class of Keller metric of uh, special Lagrange manifold. But now uh, what we see here, we get kind of stable object in a category in the fiber. And now we can replace by pure algebraic notion, bridging stability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the idea is just go back from geometry to algebraic formulation and uh, Try to ax axiomatize the situation in the following way. So axiomatization is the following. We get x omega maybe j Keller manifold, not Calabio. And on x, I assume it's just a vibration. On X, I get local system of triangulated categories. So 
So for each point, you get category CX, which is in, in fact will be Fukai category of the fiber in example. And um, stability, uh, then I get stability structure, stability condition on CX, uh, but with a uh, little twist. Usual stability condition to map from, you have central charge, you map from K group to complex numbers. But uh, the whole thing is kind of invariant, equivalent in respect to C star. You can map to one dimensional complex space. It maps to VHN cotangent space XX. And that should be holomorphic dependent on, uh, on X. So it's isomorphic to C, but non canonically. And it's holomorphically depending on X. And then. kind of conjecture here says that in such situation, first if you forget about stability, you get just local system of categories. One can make a Fourier category with coefficients in this local system of categories, which will be Fourier category of total space in the example. this and uh, and then we'll have stability the stable objects are described uh, in the following uh, way which will be kind of spectral this will be generalized spectral networks so it will be a single Lagrange subset on each uh, 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 on each an alpha use, uh, 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 which will be kind of cells, it will be n-dimensional cells, on which you get locally constant family of objects in the fiber, which should be semi-stable for, for all points. And then you get volume form, and this guy should be a special Lagrange with respect to volume form. Yeah, so service case translates it uh, remarkably. One can replace this geometry back by algebra and get a notion and mm, mm, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the picture. Yeah, so here is a kind of same story as this uh, representation of quiver and also bounding cut chain, but the uh, uh, kind of bounding cut chain, which are uh, kind of some series in in uh, in solving some equation should play no role in the property of stability. Yeah, so it will be some kind of algebraic decoration, uh, not related to differential geometry. And this category could be. And then we try to think it could be very, very general. This category could be over any field. And this new category will be over uh, series in uh, extra parameter. Yeah, so start with finite field to get automatically uh, local field. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, that's kind of very vague project and a lot of difficulties here. Uh, and if dimension of X is two, things, everything can be understood up to very last detail, but a bit hard to write it. Uh, real dimension two, real dimension two, complex dimension one, yeah. Yeah. Dimension error of Rx2, uh, 
everything can be uh, described rigorously. Uh, have a rigorous definition. Of uh, uh, what ought to be Foucault category of global Foucault category, and and rigorous description also of semi-stable objects. But there is no proof yet; it's really stability. So this thing with this flow should work. But here, it's, uh, at least everything is now rigorously defined. Uh, I'll just explain the situation. Suppose X is a torus. And because we use this complex structure, it will be elliptic curve, yeah? Okay, so let's say like C divided by C plus tau C, Z plus tau Z, and with some coordinate W, and it has one form W. And let's take constant family of categories, just nothing, just product situation. C x is equal to zero, constant family. And stability which takes values in this uh, funny vector space, it will be just the following guy. The x will be uh, kind of z zero, which will be kind of c value at stability, that which is the same area, multiplied by one form dw. Yeah, completely stupid mm, translation invariant picture, but one can kind of play some game that uh, Keller form. It's just Keller form compatible with this structure, just any positive one one form. It will be certain some R of Z Z bar, which is positive any C infinity positive function times D Z D Z bar. Yeah, so you get non-flat Keller metric. The result should depend only on the area. So you get total area, a tot will be integral of x omega, which is positive number, some real number. Uh, the whole category in this case should be kind of like product situation. Uh, we, we know what is it. This, the full category should be tensor product uh, of original Fouquet category and multiplied by Fouquet category of the torus, which is elliptic curve by mirror symmetry. And it will be Tate elliptic curve, so dB of coherent shifts on uh, uh, Tate elliptic curves on non Archimedean field. Uh, so you get kind of GM analytic and divided by uh, powers of Z of T to total area. Like you divide complex numbers by powers of Q, you get uh, uh, usual elliptic, like, like C star divided by Q to power Z, get description of elliptic curve. Q will be number of norm less than one and you do something the same in non archimedean case. Yeah. Yeah, so the answer we know, but what is stability on this category? So for this, we should draw all this picture. And then now we should draw all possible graphs. You can see the various one-dimensional subsets in X, X. And I assume that there are uh, one skeletons of cell decomposition. Of of X now. Before I have cell decomposition of L, but now I have, I have cell decomposition of X. So there will be certain kind of two periodic picture with certain cells, finitely many cells, and then mm, one can try to see what here. Uh, just put it here. Goes on. What is Q or QL? In this case, it's something depending only on this graph. Yeah, yeah. No, I, th I told that the approach when you have singular ground space, you get some quiver with whose vertices will be edges of this thing. Yeah, some, some complicated quiver. And uh, in fact, it depends only up to derived equivalence, only up to number of two, two cells. 
it's up to derived Marit equivalent. Marit equivalence. The, because quivers get like categories finitely many objects, and so the categories a little bit adjust will be db of coherent shifts of singular elliptic curve. Yeah, so the main elliptic curve. This, this complex elliptic curve will be single elliptic curve, so will be elliptic curve of integers, and it will be union of uh, certain um, F2 copies of P1 glued uh, in, uh, in cyclic way, uh, when F2 is number of two-dimensional faces, two-dimensional cells in the cell decomposition. Yeah, the, the, um, uh, in fact, it's Foucault category of torus minus F2 punctures. And when I put infinite volume near punctures, it's just the same story. Uh, so the identification is not canonical because, uh, like, punctures are points in the middle of cells, and you can move them. And uh, on this thing, X simple ectomorphism, which is the Teichmüller group, M1F2, fundamental group of more the space of genus zero curves F2 punctures, acts on this uh, things. And if you move in some standard way, you get a one identification, one category to another. Yeah, so it's mm, mm, way to define this uh, thing. One can do it something more explicit, but it, it, uh, now what you do, what is deformation of the story of this uh, QL? Uh, deformation depends on n numbers, which are areas of this uh, domains, depends on numbers area i, area i is integral of omega by i's domain in i from 1 to f2. You get this numbers, uh, by the sum of area i or a i, sum of a i is equal to a dot the total area of the sink. Uh, and the deformation is given by the following way. If you get, kind of in some model, you, you can see the double points of the sinks, which are given by, by coordinate cross. You deform by x, y, y, i equal to t to a, i. So you get a kind of small hyperbola. And if you move together, you get smooth curve. And the smooth curve will be exactly the state curve. Yeah, so that's, uh, mm. yeah, and uh, if you combine the whole things together, you get, uh, now from this picture, you can construct all this inductive limit for all graphs and so on, so you can identify the whole things. And then you get uh, uh, a candidate what are stable objects. You should draw straight graphs in, th in this flat metric related to omega, not, not in Keller metric, flat metric is special to this related to complex coordinate. And this is a uh, description of how the things should work together. And one, then we can iterate the construction. So one can multiply category by elliptic curve. Mm -hmm. One can multiply another elliptic curve. And uh, kind of if you iterate it, then you, do, then you get the following thing. Uh, you get, for any finite sequence, Complex, which are complex curves, complex elliptic curves, and with omega i will be one zero forms, non vanishing one zero forms, like this d d dz here. I construct a stability structure on d dimensional abelian variety over iterated. Novikov field, so it will be something like u t1 to power r, t2 to power r, it will be multi-dimensional local field, and this uh, 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 abelian variety will be kind of product of Tate curves with smaller and smaller par parameters, uh, whereas t, t i 
for a, I, I also should put some numbers, a dot one, a dot d greater than zero, choose any real numbers. So, so it will be like product over ti i dot to power z in corresponding coordinate. And stability structure will be the following. So it gives us a billion variety, a k group of uh, db coherent sheets on a will maps to z to power 2 to power d, which will be tensor product over h1 of my tori. And uh, then each guy maps to C by product of integrals of my form omega i. Yeah, so you get kind of complete ma mess between abelian varieties on one field and another field and get uh, stability conditions on abelian varieties. Uh, and stability conditions are kind of very, very non-trivial. So the stable object will be, if you try to think what is literally, it means that my uh, Lagrange manifold will be kind of like piecewise linear. I construct step by step by vibration of, of graphs, over graphs, over graphs, and so on. But that will be kind of nice, complete mathematical description. And conjecturally, it should extend to all abelian variety, because here I live near a very deep cusp in the model space of abelian variety, and conjecture should extend to all of them. And for this, it's completely open question. Yeah. OK, so yes, it's, yeah, but at least everything is formulated. Now the question to brood. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you.